Happy Sabbath for everyone and welcome to our lesson preview. This is our um, uh, lesson number 12 and the title is Covenant Faith. Uh, and what we are going to see is what's, what's the role of faith within the covenant and, and especially faith in what um, and faith in, in whom. So that's what we are going to see um, in this uh, lesson. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for um, your salvation. We want to thank you for all the things that you have done because everything has the, the, the goal of saving every single one of us. We understand that not everyone is going to be saved, not because you don't want them, but because uh, some of us pay no interest in, in, in your salvation. So today, we ask you, Father, that as we go through this uh, beautiful lesson that we may be taught by you in something. There's something that we can share with other people in regards of salvation and faith that we might do it and, and, and we may share what you have done for every single person in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, so when it comes to salvation, uh, there are many different points of view. So, for example, uh, Baptist uh, church and many evangelical church, churches, they believe that uh, salvation happened at the cross, which is fine, but it is a point in time. And everything that is related to salvation happened back then, 2,000 years ago, and that's it. If we come to those who follow um, John Calvin in, in, in his teachings, uh, especially predestination, they believe that salvation happened in a council that uh, was uh, done in heaven and they decided who was going to be saved and who wasn't. If we go to uh, review what the Catholic Church believes, then we're going to find that uh, salvation happened uh, part of it in, in the cross of uh, uh, Calvary and then uh, the person after the death they, they have to spend some time in the purgatory until they pay enough for their sins and, 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 and then they can be saved. But if we come to a seven-day Adventist church, then things are a little bit different because we know that uh, the, the price was paid in, in, the, in the cross of, uh, um, of Jesus Christ, but then his sacrifice uh, was presented in, in a sanctuary in heaven where Jesus himself is the minister, ministering his own blood and then uh, mediating, interceding for every single person and, and then this person can be saved. And the reason is because uh, remember that uh, when, when Moses was instructed to build a sanctuary for the people in Israel, the same uh, as later was built the temple, God told Moses that everything was going to be done according to the model in heaven. So the, the, the sanctuary in the earth was going to reflect the model in heaven. Then we have to wonder why, why is there a need for a sanctuary in heaven? So then the salvation was taught through the services of the sanctuary to the people of Israel. And when Jesus came and, and died for us, we know that the, the, the veil in the temple was torn from top to the bottom, eh, eh, signifying that the lamb that was going to be sacrificed at that very time was uh, no need for him to be sacrificed because the lamb of God was dying on the cross. So his sacrifice now replaced all the human sacrifices, all the sacrifice made by humans, uh, to the, those uh, little animals because the supreme sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice was made by Jesus Christ. So he presented his sacrifice in heaven and now he intercedes on behalf of those who repent and confess their sins and using his own sacrifice and his own merits. So now, what does he have to do with our lesson for this week? It has to do a lot. Salvation is by faith. So the first thing that we have to state is that salvation is by grace. We can say it this way. Salvation is by grace through faith. Okay, we are saved 
by grace. There's nothing that we can do in order to save ourselves. Nothing that we can help God in this matter. I remember uh, being in the seminary that I, a professor was telling us about a person who was interviewing some other people, talking about salvation. And, and um, some of them uh, answered the question about how they were saved. And most of them understood that salvation was by grace alone. And, and all the merits, everything, the sacrifice, everything was done by Jesus Christ. But it, it was interesting what another person answered. And this person said that uh, it was uh, by grace, but with the help of himself. So he, 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 the, the interview cut, uh, was cut uh, in the middle of this question because he said, are you sure what your answer is? And he said, yes, because I think uh, we can help the Lord a little bit. So the professor said that he, he used this example. Pretend that we are going to heaven. We made it to heaven. And we all meet in heaven again. And while we are... Uh, up there, we just greeting each other. Hey, it is great that you made it. It is great that you made it. It is great that you made it. It is great to see you here, here in heaven. How did you make it? And then the, the answer of the people were pretty much the same. Oh, I made it through the merits of Jesus Christ. I made it through the grace of Jesus Christ. I made it because I trusted in what Jesus did on the cross for me. And then the other one who thought that he could help a little bit. I made it. Um, through the merits of Jesus Christ, but I, I just made it through myself a, a little bit. I just crossed the fence and, and I did my, my best. So this is a big problem because um, according to what the Bible teaches, we are supposed to have, to, to have faith in what Jesus did, even when we don't see it. We don't see what Jesus did because that happened 2,000 years ago. We don't see what Jesus is doing in heaven right now in the, in, the, in the heavenly sanctuary because we don't see what's going on in heaven. But through faith, we understand what is going on. So, okay, so salvation happens when we believe, we have faith, when we believe that everything has been done. And it is not easy. It is hard to understand that something is for free because we are so used to buy things. We, we are so used to get things through, through uh, trading something. To, we give money and we get something in return. Or we work for something and, and, and then in return we have what we are trying to get. But gets, getting something for free, it is kind of uh, difficult for us to grasp. So that's why many people have this conflict in his mind and they try to do their best and they try to do their, 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 their best efforts and put whatever they have in order to, to be good before the Lord. When the Lord says, I have done everything and everything is by grace. Faith in the grace. What does it mean to have faith in the grace? Well, let's, have, let, we, let's understand what grace means. Grace is the undeserved gift of the salvation. So we don't deserve to be saved. But the Lord, in His grace, He said, I'm going to give you the salvation for free. And, and, and it is in us to trust that that is true. That's where, where the, the faith comes in. We need to trust that we are saved doing nothing but believing that we are saved by grace. Um, it is free, not because we deserve it, but because the merits that Jesus uh, Christ already did. So Galatians um, 2 in verses um, 8 to 10, let's, let's uh, read it. Galatians 2 verses 8 to 10. Okay, and it says, For he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry, the circumcised worked also through me, through for mine 
to the Gentiles. And when James, let me see if I am, no, yes, is it? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It is Ephesians. <laughs> That's why it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> Ephesians, 2 verses um, uh, 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, so we are saved by grace through faith. So we have to believe that we are saved by grace. Um, and like I said before, there's nothing that we can do in order to save ourselves. Um, uh, the problem is that when we sin, we have offended God's character. Okay, according to the Bible, sin is the breaking of the law. The law is a reflection of God's will. God's will is his own character. So then when we are breaking the law, we're sinning and we are offending offending God's character. So that's the reason we cannot do anything in order to save ourselves because the one who is offended is the Lord. We can say, oh Lord, I'm, 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 I am repented of what I've done and, and, and please forgive me, but the stain, the sin is still there. Somebody has to pay for that and no one else can pay but someone who is equal to God. In the lesson appears uh, uh, an illustration very interesting, talking about the, the Rembrandt paintings. And if you Google these uh, paintings, you're going to find that they are worth millions. The, 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 the less expensive uh, painting of Rembrandt, it, it is sold by $18 million. Okay, So let's pretend that someone, it's... Um, going in the, in the museum, it's, it's walking through the museum, visiting the museum, and he's uh, carrying his uh, little boy. And, and they are looking at all these paintings, Rembrandt paintings. And then, for uh, some reason, the little boy grabs a, a little bit of ink and throws it and spreads it in one of these paintings. What is going to happen? You may work and may, maybe even you have those $18 million to pay for the painting, but that's not the, 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 the way to pay. The, the museum is going to say, well, okay, you, you're not supposed to pay this. You need to replace the painting. How in the world are you going to replace the painting? There's no way. Only Rembrandt will, could be able to reproduce what he already did once. And, and that's probably kind of a, an illustration of what happens when we sin, because only someone who is equal to God can pay the, the, the wages of sin. And in this case, was Jesus Christ the one who paid on the cross for our mistakes and our sins? At the moment we try to help, then we mess things up. I remember one time my, my sister was painting something for, for uh, high school. And she was doing very, very neat, uh, a very neat job. She was uh, painting uh, just from, from top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. And then she stopped for a little bit, and then she went to prepare the, the dinner for, for, for myself and my brother. And, and, and then I saw the painting, and I said, well, while my sister uh, is occupied uh, with the dinner, then I'm going to help her out. And I started to paint him, but my painting wasn't exactly the same as hers. She was from top to the bottom, and I started going from right to left. And then and I, and I pressed too much the, the, the crayon, so when she came back, she saw two different um, uh, traces. Her trace and my trace. And my was even brighter, because I put a lot of press on the crayon. And she was so mad at me, because I messed up her painting. That's what happens when we try to help Jesus with our salvation because there's nothing to do with us. Salvation belongs to the Lord and he's the only one who can save us. So there's nothing that we can do in order to help him to save us. Okay? So when we try to help, we just mess things up. Okay? Uh, we can remember uh, 
when Sarah, Abraham's uh, uh, wife, she said, well, the Lord is taking so long to fulfill his promise. And he said, here's my maid. You can, you can, you can have her and lay, in, in, in lay with her. And then she's going to uh, have a, a boy. And we're going to help the Lord to fulfill his promise. And things got messed up. So that's why we're not supposed to help the Lord in those matters because everything belongs to him. So now, now we're going to Galatians and that's um, um, Galatians chapter 2 and verses 20 to 21. Galatians 2 um, verses 20 to 21. Right here. And he says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. So in the moment we try to help, there, then we're nullifying the death of Jesus Christ because we are saying that the, the, his death is not enough to pay for our salvation and then we're trying to help a little bit. That's not the plan of salvation. Salvation has to be stated, belongs to the Lord. Okay, um, the second thing that we have to say is, um, after saying that faith in the grace of the Lord, is that we have to have faith in the blood. And then we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 18 and 19. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, for no perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like the like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. So we were purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. What, um, why is the importance of that for us today? Okay. We have to have faith in the blood. How? Well, we have to trust and believe that the blood has enough value to pay for our mistakes and our sins. Okay, let me put it this way. It, back in time, in, in, in when the first Passover was celebrated, you guys remember that um, Moses was told by the Lord that they had to uh, sacrifice a lamb. The people of Israel had to sacrifice a lamb, one per family, okay? And then with the blood, they were going to paint the doorposts and every house that was painted in the, in the doorpost with the blood of the lamb, then the, the angel of justice will pass over and will not kill the, the, the firstborns of that family. Okay? And that's how the blood saved the, the families of Israel. Okay. So the blood for the people of Israel in the, in the time of the first Passover celebration, had a special value because it cost, it was the same as the, 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 the cost of the life of the firstborn. And even the animals were killed by the angel of justice. So it had a great value. For the lamb was his life. For the people of Israel was the life of the firstborn of each family. In our time, we have, to, we have to think that the life of Jesus Christ was um, uh, given for us to save us. And his blood was shed on the cross in order for us to be saved. And whoever believes that that blood was enough or it is enough to pay for our sins, then we can be saved. So we have to have faith that his blood is it's, it's of a great value in order to save us. Uh, in modern times, there's people that need blood. Uh, this week, is exactly, I was uh, uh, speaking with one of my friends, and he was telling me that he was um, uh, struggling with COVID-19. He was in the hospital for five days, and he told me, 
you know, uh, well, if, if I would have uh, uh, contracted COVID-19 back when uh, probably last year, July last year, a year ago, when, when everything, everything that is known about COVID right now wasn't known back then, then probably I would have uh, died. Because um, he contracted COVID early this year. Because he said, uh, at the moment I, I, I was in the hospital, uh, they, uh, they put me uh, plasma. So they, they made some uh, blood transfusion as well to, to my body, and then I, I, I was saved. I remember another time when I, another friend of mine, um, he called me one day and he said, hey, can you donate uh, blood for my dad? He is going to go through a surgery and the, and the hospital is requiring blood uh, from, from family and friends uh, besides the cost of the surgery. Uh, and, 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 and we did. The thing is, for some people, blood has different values. For the donor, it's a little bit of money. It's a favor that, is, that he or she is doing for, for, for a person, for the hospital, for a good cause. But for the one who is in need of the blood, it represents life. So in the same way, the blood of Jesus Christ may have a different value for yourself than myself. If I am in need of that life, the eternal life that Jesus is offering, then I need his blood. Because my blood is not enough to, to make it to the eternal life. But his blood is it, it's credited to me. Then I, I am ready for the eternal life. But if I, if I decide that I put no value or not enough value in the blood of Jesus Christ, thinking that his sacrifice is not enough, and, and, and that there's nothing that his sacrifice has to do with me, and that salvation may be gained through a different way, then his blood is not enough then probably eternal life is not something that I'm looking for or looking forward to have. So the covenant, going back to our main theme of the quarter, the covenant rests on grace, the grace of the Lord. And through faith, faith we believe that we are being saved. Blood is life. And the life of a person is in the blood. So then we better believe that the life of Jesus Christ is given to us through his blood. The second part, living by faith. And here we're going to talk about Abraham again. It is Abraham, not Abraham yet. Abraham. Okay. When Abraham was called to leave his place, to leave his family, to an unknown place, that it was going to be shown to him later on, and that he will have a son. Remember that Abraham was called when he was 75 years old, and, and his wife was just a few years younger than him. She was not in the age of having kids anymore. But the Lord promised that he will have, or they will have a son. And Abraham believed, and according to Genesis 15:6. He believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. Everything he did is, was just to believe. He believed. But what did he believe? That's, that's what we have to answer. He believed in the word of the Lord. That's the first thing. He believed in the word of the Lord. The Lord told him, leave your place, leave your family, and go to the place that I'm going to show you later on. And I am going to give you a child. And the child is going to be the child of the promise. And then your child will form a great nation. And you are going to be the father of a great nation. He didn't have any children, any child at the age of 75. But he believed that the, the, what the Lord said was going to be fulfilled. That promise was going to be fulfilled. And then the Lord counted that believing as a righteousness for him. So this is the thing. Believing not only in the word of the Lord, believing also in the, in the impossibility of having a child at that age. So Abraham, or Abraham in this case, believed that the Lord was uh, 
almighty that he was capable to make him have a child, even at the age of 75. And, and you know what time did he, or, or at what age did he have his child? At the age of 100 years old. It took another 25 years for the Lord to fulfill that promise. But Abraham never stopped believing. And that's what, why he became the father of the faith. So Abraham's faith is believing in those things that we don't see, but we believe that they will come true. Is believing not in the doubt. Well, if the Lord fulfills his promises. No, it's not the doubt. Believing that the Lord will fulfill his promise. So, living by faith means that we trust in the promises of the Lord. The word uh, hashab, hashab, that's a Hebrew word, is the, law, the word that is used um, in Genesis 15, 6, when it says that when Abraham believed, it was counted. It was credited to him. It was assigned to him. It was considered to him as righteousness. So that word counted, Hebrew hasab, means that it is put it in his account and it didn't belong to him before. So he now has in his account something that he didn't have before. Pay attention to this. Abraham was declared righteous, a righteous man, when he believed. So his covenant that he made with the Lord rested in the faith, not in his works. So for those who believe that the old covenant, they call it the old covenant, the covenant that he made with Abraham or, or the covenant that the Lord made with Moses or any of the Old Testament covenants were based or rested on the works of the people. They, they are taking things mistakenly. They are confused. They're wrong because Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. All he had to do was to believe. And that's why he is the father of the faith. Everything was done by faith. And after he was counted as righteousness, or this was counted as righteousness for him, we know that he, he had a, 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 a very human life. So when someone is counted as righteousness, or, or, so, or righteousness is credited to this person, whoever it is, it doesn't mean that the person is going to be blameless. A righteous person is not a blameless person, is not a sinless person. Righteousness in this case, means that that person is trusting in the Lord and the Lord only. Because then, after he was uh, considered as righteous, then he, he, he lied about his wife. And then he lied again about his wife again. And, he, and then he distrusted the Lord and followed um, Sarah's uh, directions of having Agar to, to procreate a baby. So being righteous doesn't mean that he was a blameless person. It meant that he believed the Lord. Okay? So the covenant God made with Abraham rested on the faith. Then, we as Christians, if we want to enter in a covenant relationship with the Lord, then we have to rest in his promises. We have to trust in his promises. We have to have faith in his promises. What promises? Well, the first promise is uh, found. Um, I am going to quote only three promises. First promise is in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whoever believes in him, believes. That's the key word. Believes in him, do not perish, but have everlasting life. So the promise is to have everlasting life. Are we going to have everlasting life? Well, that's what we have to trust. Because if the Lord said it, he's going to fulfill it. Faith comes in when we believe. Faith in the promises of the Lord. Okay? If he has fulfilled all the promises that he did to the people in the Old Testament, 
and, and, and he fulfilled the promise of sending his son to die for us, or paying the wages of sin, and, and giving us grace, and, 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 and teaching us how to live, and how to obey, and how to, how to uh, approach him, and how to pray when we come to him with, with boldness, through, right through the sanctuary in heaven, presenting our prayers and, and, and receiving the blessing of his intercession in heaven, then we have to believe and trust that he's going to fulfill the promises of giving us eternal life. The other promise is found in Matthew eleven twenty eight, And he says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and take my yoke upon you. Because my yoke is lighter, is easier. Who is Jesus talking to? Which one is his yoke? Who are those who are weary and burdened? Well, remember that uh, the people was tired of the law. Yes, of the law of the Lord. Yes, they were tired of obeying. They were tired of uh, following rules. Because the Lord gave Moses 10 commandments and then the Pharisees made more than 600 laws out of it. Probably 2,000 laws out of the 10 commandments. And they made laws and rules, laws and rules, laws and rules. And they were judging people, seeing if they were following the rules and the laws. So whoever was under their judgment, they were living like, I don't want to make this mistake. I don't want to uh, transgress this other rule. I don't want to pass over this other law. And they, they, that was a, a, a burden to them. So Jesus said, don't listen to them. Don't listen to all those rules and laws. Just listen to me. And that's why this promise is very interesting because first he said, come to me. And when you are in me, then take my yoke, yoke upon you. And what was Jesus' yoke? Well, his law, the only Ten Commandments that he gave to, to, to Moses, that was his yoke. Don't listen to them. Take my option. I have another alternative for you. I gave it to Moses thousands of years ago, but I have it again for you. Take it and follow it. And this is all you have to obey. Not because you are going to be saved by obeying these commandments. Because now, when you come to me, you're saved. Then you can obey. So resting in the promises of the Lord. Living by faith in the promises of the Lord. So being obedient is possible because now we're saved. And the last one. John chapter 5. In uh, verses 24 and 25. And I'm going to read it for you. John 5, 24 and 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. Does not, um, and he does not come into judgment, but he has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, continues in verse 25, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who will hear will live. Those who hear will live. So the promise is to be eternally with the Lord, having eternal life. There are many people that they don't want to die. I guess nobody wants to die by, by themselves. But uh, when they face death, they want to die. The thing is, uh, if we trust in the Lord, we know that there's something beyond this life, this earthly life. There's something beyond death. And that's only through Jesus Christ through the life of Jesus Christ. So the lesson for this week was covenant faith. What kind of faith is the covenant portraying in, in, in its content? Is the covenant that says that salvation is only by grace through the faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in the grace because we trust that he's going to do it and he has done it. Faith in the blood which is the value of, of the life of Jesus Christ that was given on the cross to pay for our sins. And, and, and living by faith, the same faith that is uh, presented in the covenant, means that we are going to believe and do not put our trust in what we do, but the trust in what God has done for us. And also living in the promises of the Lord is taking the obedience of Jesus and saying, I can do it because I am saved. Is believing that He is offering to all who believe eternal life. And those who believe in God and Jesus Christ will live because they will hear Jesus' voice. So when we are going to teach this lesson this coming week, or where we are going to participate, let's remember that faith is at stake. And, and unless we believe and unless we trust what the Lord has done for us, then we are lost. But if we believe and we trust what He has done, then we understand that salvation belongs to the Lord. And like I said at the beginning, we Seventh-day Adventists believe that the, pay, the, 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 the wage of, the, of the, uh, our salvation was paid, the wage of our sins was paid in the, in the cross by Jesus Christ, but now He intercedes, ministering that salvation. And whoever repents from their sins and comes to the Lord can be saved. As simple as that. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for providing to us with such a great salvation. Such a great opportunity to live and to live eternally. Not because we have done anything, but because Jesus has done it all. Thank you for uh, reminding us about this through your word. And help us, help us, O oh Lord, through the... Um, through the work of the Holy Spirit, help us to believe and to trust that uh, we are in the, in the road to the heaven. But in the middle of the road, we probably have to face the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And then we take it. And then we have to understand that He is only our substitute. Now we don't have to pay with our own lives because it's not worth it. Jesus already paid. So then we, we can come to you boldly, as the book of Hebrews says, and, 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 and go straight out to your throne, the throne of grace. And we can find uh, redemption. We can find rest for our souls. And then when you send your son again, we're going to meet him in the clouds of, uh, in, in the air, in the clouds. And then we're going to live with him forever, eternally, as you were presented. Thank you for everything, O oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.